really spice it up quite quite that much yet, but mm -hmm. we're gonna spice it up with you. Well, mm -hmm. I have a way to spice it up. I was looking at Lou's website. Now, I saw something about 10 orgasms, 10 yes. different places. What, tell us about that. <laughs> something. Mm. The 10 orgasms. Yes. yes. Okay. Here's the thing about 10 orgasms. Women are capable of having 10 different types of orgasms, men eight. And what, I, when I wrote my book, The Big O, what I was looking for is validating scientific-based information that told people that your experiences are real and scientifically can be backed up. Mystery Chick 3000 wants to know, is there a similar physiological condition to blue balls for women? Thank you, Mystery Chick. Uh, yes, there is. There's the vasocongestion within the whole pelvic region for women without a release, which can create a, you know, that for some women, it ends up creating I, I would describe it as like pelvic misery. Um, this is a little in the more serious vein. I had always heard that people that have good sex lives, of course, are, I can see why they're more happy, but I've heard that they also live longer. Is that true? Uh, I love the studies. Thank you for that question. I love the studies that will tell you that if men are having sex, you know, um, at least once a day for an extended period of time, they're going to be living longer. Just a little FYI, the majority of the people writing those studies are men. <laughs> However, what I will also tell you is that if you, when you are feeling emotionally more connected and when you are feeling better, you live longer. We know that. We know people who are socially marginalized do end up having other things, other psychological pathologies or other things happening with them. Majority of people, when they feel connected to someone and someone really cares about them, sexually, physically, mentally, they do live longer. So thank you for that. So, so that actually goes into our whole topic on health. Here's the deal. We have health and we have sexual health, and you really cannot separate them. We're born of sexuality, it's where we come from. We identify as who we are sexually, we are sexually involved with people, so when you have a good attitude about it, when you feel good about it, you have a way of going through the world where it works better for you. You live longer, you have better relationships, and you feel better about yourself. Ergo, better health, better sexual health. So in finishing up, we talked about female number one motivator. Mm -hmm. What would be as a wrap up, the number one motivator for men as it relates to sex? Is it what we think? <laughs> number one motivator, number one motivator for men, depends on the man. For some men, it could be, I just, you know, I want to have the best amount of pleasure. Let's look at fantasy for one moment. For men, it's usually I can create an immense amount of pleasure for her. For the women, it's I'm so amazingly attractive and seductive for them. That's why they find me appealing. So I would look more at the fantasy thing. You want to know what fantasy is for most people? Watch what they wear on Halloween.